Okay, uh, welcome everybody to the Lisa Ring and Family Scholarships Information Session. My name is Simone Edwards. I'm the Start Space uh, Marketing and Communications Advisor. Um, and today, what I'd like to take you through is some um, key details about the scholarships, uh, what they are and um, how to apply and all of that good stuff. And we will include a QA. and um, I just mentioned, but just wanted to reiterate that we are recording this session today. Um, and we will uh, be sharing a link to the recording after the session in an email to you, and we will also make it available on the Start Space website. Before we get into all of the details about the scholarships, I'd just like to um, uh, speak through an acknowledgement of country. Um, I acknowledge the traditional lands of all the Victorian Aboriginal clans and their cultural practices and knowledge systems. We recognise that our collections at the State Library hold traditional cultural knowledge belonging to Indigenous communities in Victoria and around the country. We support communities to protect the integrity of this information gathered from their ancestors in the colonial period. We pay our respects to their elders, past and present, who have handed down these systems of practice to each new generation for millennia. Um, and today I am broadcasting to you from Wurundjeri Woiwurrung country, um, in Nam, in uh, also known as Melbourne. So welcome everybody. Uh, what's going to be covered in the session today? A lot of key information about the scholarships. Um, we have a special guest we're going to talk to a bit later on, and then we're going to finish up with a Q and A section. As we go through, please do put your questions into the chat, um, and when we get to the Q and A section at the end, we will work our way through all of those questions, and we'll get through as many as we can. Um, I promise uh, if we don't get through all of the questions in the time today, I will personally take those questions away and answer them and add them onto the FAQs um, part of the Startspace website um, all about the scholarships. So first of all, what are these scholarships? What are the Lisa Ring and Family Scholarships? Um, well, they are um, originally designed to support people like you, early stage founders, um, and they're um, exist to help you develop your business um, and help you learn and grow as a founder. Uh, in 2025, it'll be the fourth year that we run the Lisa Ring Scholarships and there will be two scholarships on offer next year. Um, those scholarships run for 12 months um, and include a lot of benefits we'll go through. You can apply as an individual founder or a team um, of two. Um, and they are all thanks to Lisa Ring and her family. Now, who is Lisa Ring? Lisa Ring is a philanthropist, um, a wonderful lady who's just really passionate about supporting new business founders and supporting innovation. Um, and so I've added a quote here from Lisa. Um, I won't read it all out, but I like, I'd like to read the first part from Lisa. I marvel at the creativity and talent in our community. When it comes to startup businesses, founders have brilliant ideas and plans, but are often not able to progress their businesses. This is because they need to spend many hours on their startups without the benefit of having the necessary funds. So that just gives you a bit of a flavor as to um, why these uh, scholarships came about and who's behind them. So we're really grateful to Lisa Ring and her family for the generous donation that made these possible. Okay, so in terms of the scholarships and who's eligible to apply, so they're open to any Victorian-based founder um, and you can apply for uh, individual solo founders or teams of two, so you can um, apply with a co-founder. Uh, you need to be age 18 or over. Um, and working on an early stage business or venture. So in terms of that, what does that mean? You might be at the idea stage. So you're starting out, you may have made some progress on your business. For example, um, you've uh, conducted some market research um, for your idea. You might be developing your MVP. You might have already developed it. Um, MVP meaning minimum viable product. Um, so you are, you have made progress on your business idea, you have started working on it, you may be a bit further along, um, but you certainly haven't uh, necessarily uh, earned any big funding rounds or anything like that yet. It's, it's designed for people early stage who are still, still getting going with their business idea. 
Um, you need to be able to commit to the scholarship program for uh, January to December 2025. And that means um, there are certain milestones you need to hit um, in your scholarship if you are awarded one. Um, there's a couple of reporting milestones. There's a couple of events you need um, or meetings you need to attend in person. Um, but for the, uh, the majority of it, it's, it's quite flexible. So we'll go into a bit more detail later. In terms of the benefits, so why apply for these and what, what do you get in your scholarship if you're um, awarded one? Well, the first thing um, tends to be one of the, one of the key ones, uh, $10,000 of equity free seed funding for your business. So that means you don't have to give up any ownership or equity um, for the $10,000 and you can spend that on your business how you see fit. Um, we also uh, give you 12 months of Start Space Loft co-working space membership. So during um, the duration of your scholarship, you can use Start Space co-working space, which is situated in the State Library of Victoria. You can use that as your working base um, as you work through the program. We offer tailored mentoring and coaching. So based on the needs that you have, um, where you are in your business journey and what you're looking to achieve, uh, we try and match uh, the right type of coach or um, business mentor to you and you get to work with uh, those people across the program. And we also offer um, other bespoke business support. So that could be things like the ability for you to attend um, really relevant events or conferences, um, the ability for you to take on bespoke training that's really relevant to to you and your business. So they're just some of the examples. Um, so once you come on board as a scholar, we talk to you about your goals and what you're trying to achieve and how best we can support you in that. In terms of the key selection criteria, so before when I talk through the eligibility criteria, that, that relates to who is able to apply um, for this. Uh, and then the key selection criteria is the information that we need you to supply to help us understand um, more about your business, what you're working on, the progress you've made, um, and the uh, people who select the scholars will use this information to decide um, who to award the scholarships to. So when we're talking about the market and problem, this is all about like, what is your business idea or your business model? And how did you come up with it? What's this problem you're, you're trying to solve? And, and who's it for? Who, who are the market or who are your customers? Um, in terms of the solution and the innovation, that's sort of getting into more um, why this solution is um, unique or um, what is the solution that you're providing and how is it useful to others or how is it meaningful? Um, what's innovative about your solution? So including some information about that. In terms of the founder's strength and fit. So this is about you and your um, co-founder if you're applying with someone else. It's about how um, you're best placed to deliver this uh, solution, whether it be a product or a service. It could be relating to the expertise that you have. It could be relating to your lived experience in um, knowing all about this problem because you've experienced yourself. So it's sort of helping to explain um, why uh, this is something you're working on and, and why it's a really good fit for you. In terms of the scholarship impact, so this is um, where we're asking you to talk through uh, how the benefits that you get from this scholarship when you're awarded it, how they're going to affect you, how they're going to impact you and your business, how you're going to use the funding to help reach your goals, how you're going to use the mentoring um, and the coaching, how you're going to use the co-working space or perhaps some of the other um, support that you might get through this scholarship, what would be most useful to you and, and um, how that's going to help you reach your goals. And then finally, the traction. So this is about explaining where you are in your journey right now. So what have you achieved so far? How long have you been working on it? And it's not um, about how long. Um, it's more about being really clear about what goals you've set so far and what milestones you've hit along the way. So that's the traction piece. 
And then really importantly, how to apply. So first of all, head to the website and we've um, got the QR code there and we've included it in a few slides across this whole presentation. Um, we really recommend you read uh, the terms and conditions first. So have a look at the website landing page, head to the terms and conditions, and that just allows you to understand um, all of the eligibility and selection criteria that we've talked through, and then a few details about what's expected as of you if you are awarded a scholarship. Um, we then recommend you read the application form um, from start to finish. It's really helpful and we've designed it so that you can see all of the questions in one page. I know that can be a bit daunting filling out a, a long form. There are 22 questions, but the idea is that you know what you need to supply before you um, start putting together your application responses. And so then we recommend that you take away the questions out of the application form and draft all of your answers separately. And then when you're ready to apply, you can just copy and paste all your answers in and hit submit. Um, one of the reasons we recommend that is because um, the form itself, you are unable to save your answers as you go and come back to them and edit them. So it's best to do that in a separate document and um, finalise everything before you're ready to apply. And finally, I cannot stress this enough, we are closing the applications next Sunday. So you've got just over a week left to apply. Um, it's the 15th of September at 11.59 p.m. and we are unable to accept any applications that are submitted after that time. So just keep that in your diary and, and make sure you know to uh, finish your application before that time. And then just a bit of a timeline. So I just mentioned the cutoff time is next Sunday, the 15th of September. Uh, after that date, we will be reviewing the applications and we select a shortlist, um, usually about 10, and then they get submitted to the selection panel. And that can include um, Lisa Ring herself, uh, some of the State Library board members, um, some of the Start Space team. So um, that selection panel um, is usually comprised of uh, about three to four people who make the final decision on the scholarships. Uh, and so then we are able to let you know about your application um, by the 28th of October. And then we will be announcing the scholarships uh, at a date that is to be confirmed. It will be either late October or November this year. And we will come back to you with that date as soon as it's locked in. Um, and so please be aware once we confirm that date, you will need to be available if you are um, awarded a scholarship. Uh, and then the program starts from January next year, including your introductory meeting where you get to join the Loft co-working space and you um, start talking through your goals and um, setting up yourself for the year and for using the program and all of its benefits. Now we have a special guest joining us um, before we get to the q and I'm really excited to um, introduce Edward. Edward is one of our scholars from this year um, and he is the co-founder of DroneHand. Uh, they are an AI-driven automated flight app which are designed to work with drones and basically they allow um, monitoring of livestock across farms or all terrains so it makes it easier and more affordable to manage farms and um, your assets and that sort of thing. He can tell you much better than I can, I'm sure. But um, Edward, welcome to the session today. Thanks for joining us. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, I'm the founder of Drone Hands. Uh, as, um, as we were describing there, that it's an uh, autonomous livestock and property monitoring system using autonomous drones. Um, and I was very, very fortunate to be awarded uh, the Lisa Ring and Family Scholarship for 2024. Uh, the Lisa Ring and Family Scholarship came at a time which just absolutely turned things around for us. Uh, we were and still are an early stage startup, but we were getting to that point where we'd finished a pre-accelerator or two, started producing our prototypes and our proof of concepts, and it was what's called that uh, the cliff, the accelerator cliff, where 
you are suddenly out in the world having to try and run your startup. To get that support of uh, a cash injection, but then also to have the support of the whole start space team, uh, being able to use the loft space, uh, the extra uh, mentoring and, and services provided there just came at such the right time where now we're, what, we're nine months into 2024 and I feel like I've come 10 years. We, we are well underway. We've got investors under our belt. We've got a huge list of customers on wait list. Uh, it's been a crazy time and I really put a lot of that down to to being awarded this scholarship, giving us that boost forward. Um, other thing to note is that I live outside of Melbourne. I live out in Gippsland in Eastern Victoria and having the space of that loft uh, space and start space there allowed me to have somewhere to go to hold meetings in town to meet with other mentors or clients or potential investors uh, and also to have a space where I could be surrounded by other founders rather than out here in the countryside by myself. Um, so there are many reasons why this scholarship had really turned things around for us. That's fantastic, Edward. Um, I was going to ask you what sort of um, what benefits were were sort of the best for you in terms of the scholarship and what it offered. Clearly, the co-working space was one, but in terms of the um, mentoring and other support that you got, uh, can you give us an example of how that really helped in these last nine months um, in terms of you know evolving your business or or even yourself as a co-founder? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's it's not just about these types of scholarships are not just about money. They're about giving you the tools uh, to build your networks and to develop your your startup into an actual commercialized business. Uh, and that mentorship program was part of that. You know, it helps to provide connections to people in the industries that I may not have been able to get on my own. And as a startup founder, you know that there are lots of people out there that you wish you could connect with, but if you send them an email directly, it might just end up in a spam folder or ignored. To have uh, an organization like Startspace behind to facilitate those intros or to help find a mentor uh, really helped move things along faster. Well, that's great to hear. Um, we're so pleased that it's been such a promising year for you. Um, and yeah, we, we've certainly noticed just how much your um, drone hand has flourished and we see it mentioned all the time, every way, even on the news once um, I saw, which was really cool. Um, so I can imagine a lot of the people who've joined us today are sort of wondering, well, how? Um, how did you get picked as a scholar? Not that you know exactly how, but what advice would you give to fellow founders, um, people on the on the session today? in terms of other people looking to apply? Um, can you think of any advice you would give them? I think a lot of this comes down to, to being honest about who you are and what you are doing. It doesn't matter if you are super early stage or you've already got your MVP, whatever it is, just be honest, say, this is what I'm trying to do. This is my passion. This is what I'm trying to change in the world, whether it's just creating a, a great business to to give people more options or whether it's something in an impact area like climate or social by honestly expressing expressing the work you are doing and the the drive you have for that work i think will go a long way towards uh, uh achieving what you want to achieve with the scholarship i know through my chats with lisa ring she's amazing but one thing for sure is that she she really connects with people who have a passion and it doesn't have to be in one particular area. It just has to be clear that you believe in what you are doing and you're doing what you are doing for a reason. Yep. I uh, second that, um, it, and that is really important and tricky to get across sometimes in an application form or or what have you. But I I think that's really good advice. Just making sure 
you find a way to articulate exactly what you're trying to do and how it's helpful. What problem are you solving and and um, how is it going to help other people? Uh, that That's really great advice. Thank you. I did promise um, a Q&A section for this uh, session, so I think it's only fair that we jump into that now. Edward, are you um, okay to stick on and um, allow people to ask either questions to myself about the scholarships or if anyone has any questions for you as a scholar as well? Are you happy for that? Yeah, of course. No worries. Fantastic. Happy to answer any questions. Okay. Well, if anybody does have questions, um, please do add them into the chat. Um, and I promised at the start we would get through as many as we can um, in these next sort of 10 minutes. If there are any that we don't get to in time, I promise I will uh, address all of the questions. We'll take them away and I'll answer them and add them to the FAQ site on the um, Startspace website. And this session is being recorded and we will send um, you all a link to the recording afterwards. Um, it might not be till Monday. Uh, we'll have it live by Monday on the website. Um, and you can always check out the Startspace website to get all of the key information there as well. So I'm just keen to know, Shrey, um, have we had any questions Hi, so far? Yes, yes, we have two questions. I'll start with the first one. I think this question for you. Um, are we encouraged to submit a pitch video or slides in our application? Yeah, fantastic question. Um, so in the application form, there are 22 questions. Question 19 is all about um, asking if you'd like to submit either a pitch deck um, via a PDF or a PowerPoint, um, or you can um, upload a, a video and, and attach the link to that. So if you decide to do that, it is optional. You do not have to do either of those things. It's up to you whether you think that will um, help you explain your business and what you're trying to achieve and your goals, et cetera, the best. Um, you can also do that through the other questions that are asked throughout the application. So it is optional. If you do decide to submit either a, um, a presentation or a video, you need to keep the presentation to 10 slides um, and you need to keep the video to three minutes. And when you supply the link to view those slides or that video um, within the application form, please do do a test and make sure that somebody else, um, that they can be accessed by someone else and they're not just locked down for you to view. Um, that's a really good uh, tip and you can, use your incognito window or private browser mode to run that test. Um, so yeah, but it, it's totally optional. Okay, great, thanks. I hope this uh, answers a question from Caroline. Um, second question from Runa. I think the first part uh, um, for Edward, I think Edward addressed it in the text. Uh, but I'll read it out. So hi, hi Edward, good to hear your uh, of your business. Are you playing the IoT space as well? And then Edward answered as we are collaborating with several edge tech IoT companies. That's awesome. Uh, is there anything you want to add, Edward? Here? Uh, yeah, I mean we are software specifically drone related, but we are connected with uh, several IoT ag tech companies now. Um, it's amazing when you build these communities how how much collaboration becomes part of what you are doing. Um, so I, at the Internet of Things, IoT will be uh, playing a big role in Drone Hand in the future. Great, thanks. Um, and uh, the second part of the question come from Bruna, I think for Simone, how much traction is required and how is traction worked out? Um, and then what's the flexibility around the scholarship commitment? For example, if we work full time and working on our startups outside of work hours, can we still apply for this scholarship? Yeah, both great and really important questions. So the first one about traction, um, it's sort of um, asking you to talk through the progress you've made so far. So it doesn't matter how much progress you've made. I think what's important to think about is articulating um, where, uh, what goals you've set so far and what you've achieved, what milestones you've um, made it uh, so far in however far along you are in your journey. So for example, if you've had the idea and um, you've been conducting research to, to really understand whether the problem you're trying to solve is, is the right 
fit or um, if there really is a need or if there really are customers for um, what you're doing, for example, or if you've got further along and you're developing your MVP, um, wherever it is that you are on your journey, it's just really important to make it very clear what you set out to do and what you've achieved so far. And then on top of that, you can also um, include, you know, what you're planning to do next. Um, and as long as that's really clear, that will um, be really rich information for the uh, selectors to, to read through and consider. In terms of the question about the flexibility of the program, so um, you do not have to be working full time on your, um, your startup, your business, uh, in order to apply or be selected for this program. You do need to demonstrate that you have a level of um, dedication uh, and commitment to it. So we understand that a lot of founders um, are working on part-time work, um, study, uh, other things, you know, there's lots of things going on in people's lives and and this business that you're developing might just be one. So I'd suggest it, it it's not so important um, if you have other things that you're juggling with it, it's that you're able to demonstrate a level of commitment, um, you know, on a weekly basis and also that you're able to commit to some of the key um, criteria that's outlined in the terms and conditions. And they include things like you can be here in person for um, the scholarship announcement, for the quarterly um, check-ins with the Start Space team, for the introduction meeting that you have. Um, and there'll be a few other things like that. We also have some requirements for reporting um, at certain milestones within the um, scholarship and that relates to you know releasing the funds and, and that sort of thing so uh, in the whole year you are able to for example travel overseas um, whilst you're uh, a scholar um, you just need to be committed and continually working um, on your uh, startup and available and, and ticking off the milestones that we set out um, within the scholarship program. And as Edward mentioned, you know, he's based in Gippsland, so he's not even in Melbourne all the time, but that's fine. We are able to be flexible in that way. So I hope that helps answer it a bit. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, next question come from Nithi, and uh, um, I think I'll, I can address that. So question is, are you able to share who forms the assessment panel in terms of professional background, et cetera? This may help tailor the application to the right audience, et cetera. Um, and this one, so uh, just give you a sense of the process. So our team in terms of star space team right now, there are five of us. Um, um, we actually come from kind of quite combined diversified background. So the initial kind of assessment and reviewing of all the applications coming in uh, will be done by our team. Um, and then we, what we do is we shortlist um, a short list of uh, uh, around 10 or 12, um, and then these applications go to the uh, committee, sorry, no, the panel. Then the panel is formed by uh, Lisa Ring, the donor herself, and uh, usually a committee member of Starspace. And when I say committee members, uh, these are either uh, very senior kind of uh, experienced industry um, people, including uh, last year we had Hugh Williams, who uh, was a uh, entrepreneur himself, uh, was also he was a senior executive with Google Maps, and he's also an investor on number of boards. So he has both combination of the entrepreneur and the investor um, angle and knowing the ecosystem quite well. Um, and this year, depending on availability, uh, there are potentially other um, you know, committee members on a sitting um, who are combined, again, with a very diverse and um, um, and rich experience. And the third person is me. I'm sure, um, sitting uh, as a manager of Starspace. Um, so my role then is more in terms of facilitating and also adding a perspective um, in terms of understanding um, the entrepreneurs into um, bringing into the panel. I hope that answers your question. And uh, next question uh, from uh, Charlie is, uh, any guidance on the likelihood of product versus service business being selected? Uh, this question for you, Simo. Um, yeah, uh, great question. There is no um, preference uh, for any type of product or service um, or industry. Um, so where the scholarships are open to everybody and every business idea. 
in that sense. Um, so what I would suggest is just focusing on um, being really clear about um, what it is, uh, what your product is or what your service is and, and what problem it's trying to solve and, and how, it's, um, how it's doing that and how it's innovative. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, next one from Heath. Um, can early registered charities apply? Early registered charities? Um, yes, uh, they can. Um, so the criteria for um, the early stage, so if you're a founder of this charity, um, it doesn't, we haven't specified um, it, it's a business or, or yeah, we accept charities as well. Um, it would need to be early stage. And so uh, through the terms and conditions, there is a link um, to the launch VIC um, guide around the different stages of, of founders um, in their journey. Um, and I note that uh, a couple of people, including Stephen, has um, mentioned that the City of Melbourne Action Plan link is not working. I will... Um, I will fix that. But the uh, launch VIC one is there and can give you a bit more guidance on the criteria for meeting that early stage. But essentially, yes, you can apply. Um, and I would like to add a, a point on that. So uh, the least ring scholarship is granted based on merit based. So um, it doesn't matter your which industry, uh, which uh, what background you come from and uh, what type of businesses and you know, early stages are uh, early stages requirement. Um, however, regarding you know charities, I, I do want to highlight that like, uh, you know if the 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 model is based on I think you know government grant um, or relying on some kind of uh, you know uh, donations, um, I I'm not sure that's uh, you know in terms of like uh, fitting our criteria as, as as in business because when we define business, you have a uh, you know, we're providing a product service or in exchange for um, you know revenue. Um, the, but however, there are there are you know these days we're innovative either social enterprise or charity potentially they actually being innovative, um, creating some kind of sustainable in terms of business model. But then they use the proceeds coming from that for good for purpose. Um, so I think I would inc encourage you to think um, you know first in terms of what is actual business model there um, before you apply. Thanks for that, Shui. Um, yeah. I think we're pretty much out of time. So thank you, yeah. every, everybody, for your questions. Um, we may not have got all of them. We've got quite a few. Um, I will follow up and include any questions we've missed in the FAQs and add those to the website. Um, so just to finish up, uh, just a few key takeaways, just uh, confirming a few details. So when you do go um, and get your application ready, please read all of the terms and conditions uh, and then fill in the application form in terms of a draft first. So you get a different document, um, draft all your answers. And, and some of the questions ask for 150 or 200 words. So just be mindful of the word limits where they are um, within the application. Um, I mentioned before as one of the questions about the pitch video or slides, so they are optional. Um, but if you would like to submit um, either or, uh, you just need to um, make sure that there's uh, 10 slides or less um, or a video that's three minutes or less and make sure that the links to those um, resources are accessible, that we can um, view them. Um, and make sure you get your application in by the 15th of September, 11.59 p.m. And then you'll hear back from us about your application um, by uh, the 28th of October. Um, thank you all so much for your time today, joining us on this session. We hope we uh, answered some of your questions and gave you the confidence to apply. We really would uh, recommend you all have a go and apply. It's a, a you know, great experience just to get through the application and. Um, so good luck to you all. Um, if you have any further questions, you can email us at Startspace and check out the website and all of the information we're sharing. Um, and we will send you a link to the recording um, and the FAQs. So thank you for your time and have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks, everyone. And thanks, Edward. Also, thank you, Ed, for, jo thanks. for joining yeah. us today. <laughs>